morning everyone, this is Steve with Nick's Service out of Emerald Park, Saskatchewan. Today we're going to talk a little bit about how to set up a teach-in function here on the new Gen 6 tractors uh, with the Fent 1 cab. I'm sitting in a 700 uh, Vario uh, Gen 6 tractor with the new console. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, setting up the buttons here for our uh, teach-in. So the very first thing we're going to want to do here is find a widget and add it to the screen here for our teach-in. Um, so in order to do that, we'll go into the overview uh, manager here and we're going to find our teach-in and I'm going to replace my cargo profi screen for right now just for demonstration. As you can see, it's going to change that. In order to save that, we'll back out and this is how it's going to start off uh, whenever you first cycle the key ignition. Um, the teach-in function will be automatically disabled to prevent any accidents from happening. Now if I wanted to set this up, unlock it, uh, etc, all I'll have to do is tap on that section of the screen and it's going to bring up the uh, sequence here on the screen. As you can see we have four sequences available, uh, we can rename these to whatever we need them to be as well. Uh, and the corresponding buttons on the keypad here are highlighted on the uh, sequence number itself so we can easily identify which one's which. Um, over here on the right hand side of the screen we'll first unlock the, the uh, system for um, editing or recording. Um, by default, if you don't have a sequence already programmed, it's going to come up with a blue icon. And what that is, is telling you that uh, it's automatically setting to record um, right off the hop. Uh, if you were to play, that icon will change green, and I'll show you that in just a moment. So uh, first thing we're going to do here is we're going to give you a really good view of what's going on in the sequence. So in order to do that, we'll just select that sequence. And as you can see right now, it is totally blank, with the exception of the initial trigger. It's going to uh, only initiate this right now by default uh, while the tractor is moving forward. We can set that up later in the editor as well, and we'll cover that in just a moment. As I mentioned, the icon is, uh, is blue by default here since we have nothing in the sequence, and it's set up to record. If I press the uh, go button down here, the go one, this is the one we are going to be programming. You'll see the go is going to light up in green. The icon here changed to stop and it is recording. So I'm just gonna use a few examples here on my hydraulic remotes just so you can see what's going on as far as the triggers and stuff like that. So I'm recording a live sequence. This would be me coming up to a headland or starting a new um, swath or whatever the case may be. Whatever I wanna program that button to, I'd be recording it. When I'm finished, I'm gonna go ahead and press the uh, go button again. It's gonna to change to white and it's gonna lock that screen in there. So that's gonna be our recorded sequence. You can see here the uh, icon change to play and green over here. Um, so that's kind of our sequence that we have set up here just as an example um, based on this tractor. If I were to press the go button it's going to go through the sequence and it's going to be really quick right now. The reason being is because we don't have any uh, times or any triggers in there uh, as far as distance or anything like that because we're sitting stationary here in the tractor. Uh, we can edit that uh, in just a moment as well. If I wanted to change the name of the sequence I would hit this little pencil icon I can enter in whatever name I'd like to give this sequence. Uh, we're going to keep it as sequence one. Uh, since this is a new tractor, we're not going to confuse it yet. Now, if I wanted to re record the sequence right from scratch, uh, I would hit the record button here. I would trigger it again, and we'd start recording a whole new sequence. And again, we hit the stop button, and we have a little bit different sequence this time. Um, over here we have uh, the play button, so if you uh, have a sequence in there or have edited one manually, this is how you kind of switch between record and play. Um, just a quick button press for that. Down here is your trigger type, um, so by default it is set to whatever triggers we have programmed in the sequence, uh, which we'll highlight in a moment. Um, if I press this button here, it's going to change all of the sequences, uh, all of the items in the sequence to a single manual trigger press. So before it played the whole sequence, as soon as I pressed the button, it played through the whole sequence as uh, it's programmed. Um, but in this case, uh, I'll have to press a, the go button at each individual interval in order to get that to trigger, which could be very handy if you are uh, going through a, uh, a headland that's kind of an odd shape. Uh, you're coming to a corner of the field where you know that your timing is going to get screwed up. Uh, for example, lifting and lowering your implement, turning on your PTO, that sort of thing. Um, the, the way you have it set up there, it gives you that opportunity to very quickly switch back and forth between your, your normal triggers and a straight manual button sequence. Now we're going to go into uh, edit the uh, sequence we have set up here. In order to do that, we're going to hit this edit button. 
And it's going to break, give you a breakdown of the sequence here. This is where we're going to change our trigger types, our uh, driving direction. Um, we can add and remove different things here depending on what we wanted to do. Uh, we can change timing, etc. So the first thing we're going to talk about here is our travel direction. Uh, by default, it always starts off as forward, uh, but let's say we were working a rear snowblower uh, and we wanted to uh, change that travel direction. We'll simply uh, have it uh, selected down here and then we'll tap in the screen and it's going to change that in reverse. So this whole sequence won't trigger if you're traveling forward, but it will trigger if you're traveling in reverse now. Um, if you don't care what direction you're going, you'll choose the omnidirection button and we can be traveling in either direction, but the tractor will have to be in motion regardless of uh, what sequence you have set up. Uh, the other thing we have set here is our triggers. We have a few different trigger types. Uh, first one being finger, that is manual. The uh, S is distance. Uh, we have our when our hitch goes down to a certain point, hitch goes up to a certain point, and then on time. So after a certain amount of time, it's going to change it. So right now, uh, by default, it will always come up with the most likely uh, trigger that you're going to have. For example, for our hydraulics, it's going to be set uh, to distance as uh, default. Um, if we had, if I were to bring in another function here, for example, I'm just going to select uh, our PTO here. Um, we're going to select our 1000 PTO and I'm going to just add it here in the middle of the sequence. And uh, you can see that the default trigger for that is when the hitch comes down to a certain level. Um, that's just going to be the best option uh, or the most likely option you're going to be dealing with. Uh, we can change that trigger at any time. Um, right here is where we can click and drag to set our target percentage. Uh, in this case for our target hitch uh, height, so when the hitch gets down to 24.1%, uh, what I have set right here, uh, it will turn on the PTO for 1000 speed. Um, if you can also use the push dial down here uh, while this is uh, selected and I can use this push dial to make fine increment adjustments if I wanted to fine tune that just a little bit uh, for example for different uh, heights of terrain or for you know a few, few seconds here or there uh, half a second here or there that's probably the best uh, adjustment you can make uh, so talking more about our triggers uh, like I said we have distance as, uh, as a preset here um, we can increase that so many feet um, but let's uh, say we want to go on time instead of uh, distance uh, because our unit maybe isn't equipped with guidance uh, this particular machine is equipped with guidance so we have this option um, so we're going to select our time trigger here I'm just going to throw it on this valve for right now and you can see it changed our trigger to the clock and we're able to move that up to so many seconds okay. very straightforward like that uh, the sequences down here are uh, organized by categories. So we have hitch and PTO. We have our hydraulics. We have a bunch of different types of hydraulics here. We can scroll through uh, depending on how your machine is equipped. Uh, it's going to show you your available remotes that are available right now. Uh, the reason we don't have um, we, we won't have some f f functionality here right now because we do have the cargo profi loader attached. Uh, so we won't have direct control over our uh, blue and yellow remotes while the loader is connected. Uh, the uh, joystick gets gets uh, priority over those ones. Um, right here we have our engine functions, so our cruise control speeds, our preset engine speed one and two, uh, diff lock, um, front wheel assist. We can have those things come on in a certain sequence uh, when we re-engage in the headland uh, so that we have them disengage, re-engage, uh, so we're not causing any issues there. Uh, the last one here is our auto steer and our superimposed steering. Uh, we can have those things come in as well. So that's sort of an overview of what we have going on here with our buttons. Uh, now let's say um, I, don't, I don't want that hitch, uh, or sorry, the PTO to engage uh, off the hitch there. I want to get rid of that specific uh, item. First thing I'm going to do is highlight it. And we're going to come down here and hit this trash can icon. And it's going to delete the individual thing out of there. Simple as that. If I wanted to add something in here, if I wanted to add that hitch back in there, or pardon me, the PTO back in there, we're going to select which one we want. And we're going to find where in the sequence we want to put it using these little plus buttons. And we're going to pop it back in there. Very simple. Um, if, now, let's say I wanted to delete the uh, entire sequence out of there. Uh, we can do that as well with one button press. It's the trash can icon here in the top right corner of the screen. It's asking me to confirm that. We're going to hit the check mark, and boom, the whole thing sets back to factory default so we can re record. Anytime you make changes to the sequence, it will ask manually, uh, it will ask you to. Uh, confirm that you, you uh, want to make these changes, we'll go ahead and hit the check mark. 
and uh, this sequence saves successfully because there's no problems with it. But if there is a problem with the sequence, uh, for example, your timing's out or you have a negative value or anything like that, uh, it will give you a prompt saying, no, you have to change something in your uh, sequence uh, before this is okay because we, we actually can't do this. Uh, so it's very intelligent that way, very straightforward. Um, so that's sort of an overview of how to uh, set up your teaching functions. Um, as mentioned, if you uh, want to start uh, fresh here, we're going to hit the record um, and you'll uh, record your sequence. Uh, just keep in mind that the, uh, that the individual sequences have to be recorded individually um, and uh, you'll be able to set everything up the way you need it to do. Uh, any editing can be done very easily. And once this feature is unlocked here, uh, you'll notice on the main screen uh, that it'll give you an overview of what uh, your sequence is. It'll highlight what step you are in the sequence um, all the way through here. So you can still see a really good overview of the rest of your tractor information while still seeing what's going on with your with your headline functions, your teaching functions um, at, at any point uh, during your operation. Again, you can add this so widget into anywhere in the screen. We'll cover the uh, setting up of an overview uh, a little bit more in detail in another video. And I hope this information helps if it does, give us a thumbs up on the video. If you have any questions, please comment below and we'll get back to you with an answer. Thanks.